In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Good morning. St. Paul comes right out in the epistle, and he tells us, God has given us all gifts, so let us use them. So some of us may ask, what gift do I have? What can I offer to someone else? The beauty of God is that he created us in his image and likeness. So we all have something to offer. Each of us is blessed with unique talents. Whether we need to discover them or we know what we excel at, we are responsible for sharing these gifts with others. This is how we fulfill our role in the community, contribute to each other, and ultimately give back to God. There's a friend of mine, he's a priest, actually not far from here. He told me one time, if I'm not using my talent or talents to help people around me, and I am not teaching, then I am burying the talent or talents that God has given me. It's very heavy. And this is something that I will never forget as long as I live. And I hope that I'm multiplying the talents God has given me to others so they may do the same. It can be anything. Playing the piano, teaching a child or an adult how to play, just being nice to everyone. We know in this day and age that that's something that we all need. Singing or chanting or even how to read, no matter what it is. We can be the image of Christ in the lives of people we see each day. And St. Paul tells us in the epistle that no matter what our talent may be, multiply it and teach every day. Do everything with a smile, with love, be kind and compassionate. We all wanted to be treated that way, so we need to treat everyone else that way. There's nothing perfect in this world except for Christ. But the golden rule comes pretty close. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Be the image of Christ to each other. Your co-workers may be annoying or bossy. Your spouse may have said something to set you off. Or your kids may have taken a rock to your car or had art class with a marker or crayon on the walls of your house. But we look at everyone as if they're Christ. Take a deep breath and say, Lord, have mercy. Or the Jesus prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or take the Jesus prayer and put the name of someone you are struggling to love or be kind to at the end of it. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on Chris. My wife says that one a lot. Or we can ask God for help. Lord, help my unbelief. Especially during times of being stressed or annoyed or upset, it's easy for us not to see Christ in each other. It's the most challenging time for us to see Christ in each other, and not when life is easy or good. So St. Paul finishes the epistle by saying, Serve the Lord, rejoice in your hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, practice hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. This is how we multiply and teach the gifts and talents we have been given to us by God. We all have talents. We all can share and multiply them with each other. And we connect this to the gospel. And in the gospel, we can be seen as either the scribes, the paralytic, or the friends or people who bring the paralytic to Jesus. We can be like the scribes by questioning God and thinking we know better than God. I need this in my life, or I know better than God, or anyone, who am I, and how my life needs to be, and what I need. If we live like this, are we multiplying our talents? Are we being Christ-like? Who we really need to be like in the gospel is the friends of the paralytic, or the paralytic himself, who we really emulate every day. The friends of the paralytic had the talents of love and compassion to bring a man to see Christ who could not physically walk and bring himself to see Christ and be healed by him. 
They multiplied their talents by showing the crowd around them how important their love and faith in Christ was to have their friend healed. The paralytic represents both of us as fallen humans in our spirituality. We sin, whether intentionally or intentionally each day. We can't avoid it. We allow our lives to get in the way of Christ, and it is much easier when we are tired to say on Sunday morning, oh man, an extra hour of sleep would be great. Oh, bacon and eggs, oh, with coffee, it sounds fantastic. But if we push ourselves to pray, participate in the liturgical life of the church, honestly as best we can, help each other and be Christ-centered, then like the paralytic, Christ will say to us, take heart, your sins are forgiven. This is what we want to hear from Christ because he knows that we love him and are trying our best with the busyness of this world to put him first and love each other as we would Christ. Christ heals the paralytic because of faith. The faith of the paralytic and his friends to get to Christ. Our faith is collective. We're all here because we believe in Jesus Christ and the doctrines of the Orthodox faith. But also, we collectively multiply our talents by doing, for example, St. Raphael's table yesterday or packing meals during Lent, by praying for each other, and the list goes on. It's also personal, which is also very beautiful. We pray to God, the Theotokos and the saints, we take confession, We do things to help our own spiritual journey, but also we do that by helping others as well. Faith is critical for our salvation. So like the friends of the paralytic, let us multiply the talents that God has given us and help each other see and get to Christ. So we, like the paralytic, who was healed for his love and determination to see Christ, we can be told, take heart, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.